product head enterprise mobility from Airtel. At Airtel, he is responsible for driving growth and profitability in areas like M2M, enterprise value added services, cloud enablement, unified communications, and more. He has lived and worked in Asia Pacific, Middle East, Africa, and Europe, and has had the opportunity to successfully lead challenging cross functional projects in collaboration with the OEMs, service providers, and independent consultants. Mr. Milwani. So, uh, you know, the good thing about uh, coming to such forums is uh, you can, you know, very candidly say, I don't know everything, right? And um, thanks Telematics Wire for arranging this. Um, we are here to, to learn a lot from the uh, rest of the industry and, uh, you know, uh, throughout my presentation, uh, I'm going to demonstrate uh, three feelings. One is uh, at times cluelessness, one is uh, chest thumping, and one is uh, to garner your empathy. Right? So, uh, so, yeah, let's get on with the presentation. Uh, I represent... Uh, within Airtel, Airtel business, which deals with enterprises as our customers, about from the B2C customers, uh, which is the Airtel telco. So I'm going to talk about uh, – so my presentation is in three parts. The first part is going to talk about our understanding of what the connected vehicles market is and how we perceive it. And then I'm going to talk about, uh, you know, how we at Airtel are building the networks to, to support the, the M2M and the smart phone and the data world, uh, which is the new world. And the third part is going to be, uh, you know, me performing my fiduciary duties and telling you about our product portfolio, right? So, yeah, you know, without much ado, right, uh, we think uh, there are six or seven, you know, major verticals among the con connected vehicles uh, world which which drive 80 to 90 percent of the of the business right being infotainment fleet management safety and security convenience location based services and usage based insurance right uh, for the people in this room i don't think this is anything new which i need to kind of elaborate further upon but this is just to tell you that this is how we see the world and you know uh, we might stand corrected in the near future, right? So how do we see this market developing and what are the key drivers, right? We see this six as key drivers for, for the connected vehicles uh, market, right? So one is, and, and recently in news is the opening up of 49% uh, FDI in the insurance sector, right? Uh, I, I am aware that, uh, you know, few of our co-participants are from the insurance industry, and they would be kind of, you know, far more informed about this than us. So what we, uh, you know, uh, look at it in the way is uh, with this foreign direct investment, uh, you know, there is going to be technological advancement coming into the insurance or the vehicle insurance industry. And we, through one of our group companies, which is Bharti Exa Insurance, uh, are kind of partially aware that, you know, usage-based insurance is being pushed very aggressively by the foreign partners of the car insurance uh, companies in India. So we see opportunity there. 
for the in the connected vehicles market right uh, driving has become uh, you know social so a lot of people want to use their smartphones want to kind of keep their friends and uh, you know known updated about what they are doing and where they are going to right and hence uh, the need of a connected vehicle the need for updated content whether it is infotainment whether it's news whether it's you know your location based services you know security and safety for sure is uh, you know uh, like my fellow speakers were talking from ashok leland and and from ford you know is one of the biggest and uh, i would uh, you know say uh, value creating uh, value creating option is the security and safety aspect of a connected vehicle cost advantage which also my co speaker uh, from ashok leland said you know you could avoid recalls you could forecast forecast recalls and also after the post sale support right you could uh, you could forecast when and how a car needs to be serviced and and you could proactively inform the consumers of the, of the car industry right so those we see are the key drivers Uh, from a connected vehicle perspective of course fleet management and increased productivity is again uh, not necessarily from an oem perspective but from a user perspective a great driver for connected vehicles so now uh, you know this is one aspect i thought i should touch upon uh, which we believe we kind of understand better than others in the ecosystem right which is the safety aspect of it right and this in general applies not only to connected vehicles but to m to m as a whole right so right it it generates a connected vehicle generates a lot of convenience but is it safe yeah what if your car gets hacked so just to kind of uh, put some statistics behind that statement this is a survey done by mckinsey Uh, connected car consumer survey in 2014 close to 50% people globally depending on which country they are from are hesitant about their privacy and are hesitant about their safety when it comes to connected cars right so you know what can possibly happen right what if somebody hacks hacks into your engine what if somebody locks your car what if somebody you know tempers with the dashboard of your car how much fuel it contains you know so and so forth so this is possible right and this can happen so that's the problem statement and hence there has to be a solution right so what we at airtel are building and are offering in the market today is a possibility to connect your vehicles without touching the internet right and what that does is it inherently stops the possibility not completely not, you know no security solution is ever 100% full proof or else there would be no hacks but it it to a great extent limits the possibility of your vehicle being intruded into over the internet right we'll talk about in detail during the product slides as to how we go about doing that but that's that's one aspect and then there are several security layers over and above the the private uh, mpls layer which can kind of help you to keep your connected vehicle environment in, in a secure environment so that was about you know what we as a telco perceive the connected vehicles market to be right i would uh, now move to the second section of my presentation which is what we are doing as a as a telco to enable this uh, industry and and you know what what are our key directions when it comes to connected vehicles and m2m industry overall so now this is the chest thumping part of the presentation right so today in india we have 170000 plus uh, mobile base stations right connected over 160000 kilometers of optical fiber network and carrying more than 90 billion minutes per month and 30 petabytes of data right 
So just to put 30 petabytes into in, in a perspective, it is equivalent of 7 billion high-resolution photographs. That's what 30 petabytes could, could potentially mean, right? And then we are connected via 17 global POPs globally with an undersea cable system of 75,000 kilometers. So, so that's our, you know, that's a sense of our scale and size when it comes to network at India. So when you drive your cars into the hinterland, as the, as the engines get better and the cars get bigger, you know, uh, we at Airtel are covering 99% of the towns. 87% of the population, populated area has been covered. 85% of population is covered. And 67% of villages are covered. Right? For those of you who would like to look at your relevant states, those are the numbers. Uh, sorry for the lack of clarity. but. You know, more or less, we are there right, when it comes to coverage. And this is obviously basis 2G network and not 3G or 4G network. So, so there, there is still a lot more to be done when it comes to 3G and 4G networks. So now that the chest thumping part is over, this is to for you to empathize with us. right? So as compared to a global benchmark, we deliver these services with one third of the spectrum, right? And a large chunk of it has actually been delivered to us in Feb 2014, right? So, so we do all of this, and we do it with a lot less than what the global standards are, right? So, as compared to a, a global standard of 46 megahertz of spectrum per operator, and four to five operators in a country, we have 15 to 17 megahertz and anywhere between 7 to 10 operators, depending on which circle we are in. Right? So, so that's doing more with less. That said, when it comes to a spectrum position in India, right, Airtel is at a, at a, in, a, in a situation where it has got a pan-India footprint to deliver data networks at the speeds that would be warranted to connect the vehicles in, in the way that we are talking about, right? So we have uh, 4G spectrum in 21 circles. We have uh, 3G spectrum in 13 circles and 2G spectrum pan-India. And most of uh, the country where we hold the spectrum, it's, it's completely liberalized for us. So, so we can deliver multi-tier of services over the spectrum. So, so that's on the spectrum side, and that is quite clearly reflect, reflected in the way our revenues are shaping up, right? As you can see the red and the blue chart, right? The data revenue part of our, uh, of our revenues is increasing substantially, which is a, which is a kind of uh, proof of the recipe that, you know, the focus towards data networks is going to be the growth driver, right? And similarly is the subscriber story where, you know, 18% of our data subscribers are now 3G data subscribers. Right. And this is only going to grow. And how do we go about doing that, right? So when it comes to connected vehicles, when it comes to, uh, you know, data networks, so, so, so a lot of discussions that we are going to have and we've had are assuming that your car will always have a seamless data network and data network connectivity, right? So how do we go about doing that, right? So there are three main pillars of how we are doing this. One is building a far flatter architecture when it comes to telecom networks. Typically, they have been very hierarchical network architectures, which slow down the speed of data delivery and the latency, right? So with the 4G network, your last mile is the first mile. We are investing substantially in building intelligence and capability to dynamically allocate capacity based on the needs of our customers, right? And last is the fact that we are building networks so that they are closer to the user, so that, you know, it's, it's kind of, uh, it does not get affected by being a macro layer, and hence, if there is a traffic storm, you know, not critical services don't get affected. So. So different services are being planned to be served over different layers of the network. 
So in essence, what are we trying to do at Airtel when it comes to you know, building networks for the connected vehicles or for the smartphones or for the voice? You know, this is a statement from a Sears catalog about 100 years ago, right? When electricity was invented, there used to be only one kind of socket. That was for the bulb, right? And when people started inventing newer electrical appliances, you know, the bulb socket remained to be the same. So you, you had to actually build a 15-meter cable and go and fit it into the bulb socket because the electricity thing had not moved on, but the electrical equipments had moved on. And what was socket then is data networks now. Right? So we, what we are trying to do at Airtel is build smarter sockets. Right? A network which adapts to the needs of the customer, right? uh, whether it is hinterland or whether it is urban network. Right. So now coming to the fiduciary duty part of my presentation where I have to kind of talk about our offerings. Um, feel free to ask any questions if you will. Right. Uh, that would only make it more interesting if, if you have any. Yeah, please. So, okay, this will help, right? So what we do is, uh, these are the enterprise services that we offer. So I would like to highlight to two or three parts of our capability presentation. Right? One is the data center, one is the MPLS, and one is the packet code network over which we usually relay the internet traffic. So what we do is, from that packet code network, we create a specialized virtual network for you, and we make that connect to your intranet or to your MPLS network via the packet code network. So the normal SIMs will connect over the same Airtel network, but they will never hit the internet. So you, you will be given over that data over MPLS circuit, which will be a connection between Airtel and your organization whichever organization you choose to be with. So, so that's how we do it, right? And there are multitude uh, ways of doing that. Uh, we'll talk about it in detail later. So, so that's from an Airtel business portfolio perspective, right? I'll just quickly uh, kind of run through it at the cost of not boring you with details. So network services, we do a lot of MPLS, all kinds of in internet and MPLS connectivities. We do all kinds of voice solutions, whether it is you know value-added services or plain vanilla voice, international, national, and right. We are into the business of uh, providing global MPLS and desktop virtual conferencing, and you know all kinds of data connectivity and wireless data, obviously 2G, 3G, 4G, and value-added services of value uh, of wireless data, and then managed services, which is managed MPLS and managed video conferencing and data center and uh, digital media services. So, so that's the entire Airtel business portfolio, just, just as a way of introduction. And when it comes to the relevant portfolio for connected vehicles, and you know, partially answering your question is the first column there, which is private APN, right? So what happens is we create a private APN on our uh, GPRS network, which connects directly to your uh, corporate network, and that traffic never hits the internet. So it's practically, uh, you know, in a, in a layman terms, it's practically uh, extending your intranet or your firewall boundaries up to the last mile, which is the SIM card. Right. So even a SIM card will only be able to access what you allow on your intranet or what you allow on your firewalls. That's what it practically does. Right? Yeah. Sorry? So, it is for all the speeds. So whatever data network you are on, whether you are on 2G, whether you are on 3G or you are on 4G, all will go through the same pipes. Right? So, so that's, that's you know, a, a very kind of, I would say, relevant example of what we mean by smart sockets. Right? This is what we precisely mean by smart sockets. Not one size fits all. What it also does in the process, and was not originally the intent of building this solution, is it reduces the latency by almost 
one is to six times, right? Because now your traffic does not have to go to an internet exchange in LA or Singapore or Frankfurt and come back, right? It can directly go within the country to your intranet network. So the latency is typically reduced from uh, 300 milliseconds down to 50 milliseconds, depending on the geographical location you are on, right? Whitelisting is another flavor of that solution where, uh, you know, we expose the traffic to a particular public IP that you ask us to, right, if you will, you know. So, like I said, no exposure to the internet. You can, you know, kind of develop multitude of controls, how much data is to be used, for what purpose is it to be used, you know, so data abuse can be perhaps prevented. The other Offering there is a, is a GSM-based, location-based services. And I was uh, talking to a friend at, uh, at Ola Cabs. She, she happens to be a good friend. She, she handles the product organization there. And, uh, you know, there were situations in Bangalore and Chennai where the driver was driving the cab and the data connectivity was lost. Now the entire app ecosystem, everything has been built, assuming that the app of the driver will be connected to the data all the times. What if that data connectivity is lost, right? How do you get in touch with the, with the driver, right? So, so we help in kind of coming up with solutions in such situations where if your uh, you know, fleet or if your uh, valuable assets are traveling into hinterland where there might be issues of data connectivity, we offer SMS or voice as a backup solution or a circuit switch network as a backup solution where you can always you know, get the information where your vehicle is. Right. This can also work along with the GPS-based, location-based solutions where you know, it's a hybrid offering. If the GPS works, fair enough. If the GPS does not work because it's an indoor-like situation, the GSM-based location tracking will, will give you the, the location of the, of the asset, right? And then, of course, uh, you know, we are building an entire new portfolio of digital engagement where using, uh, you know, technologies like toll-free data or reverse charging and technologies like header enrichment, we will be helping our customers with, uh, you know, making a reverse charging mechanism a reality where, for example, you have uh, a portfolio of apps which you want your customers to access without being charged for the data, right? So we have mechanisms now where uh, we could deploy a reverse charging mechanism where your end customers will not be charged, but you'll get the bill for whatever usage they do, right? What it essentially does is gives you a, a very lean and efficient model of providing data services to your end customers because then you don't have to give them 25 rupee recharges every month and knowing that you know 80% of them will actually never use that so so this is a very efficient way of providing internet services to your end customers what header enrichment and potentially you know other channels of customer engagement can do like ussd and sms is uh, you know if somebody accesses your internet property or it, you know, they access your app ecosystem, we have a way to give a digital identity to that visitor, right? Because, um, you know, when that data passes through our uh, data networks, you know, we, we have a ways and means to capture the, the identity of that customer. Obviously, we never share the identity of the customer, but given that you have the consent of the customer, we can always give, get you a way to get back to that customer. So, so those are some of the areas that we are, you know, really developing upon. And data toll-free as a product can also work very well for SOS services where, uh, for example, a situation our fellow speaker was explaining where, you know, uh, there's no data available on the SIM card, right? The, 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 the bloke has run out of recharge. So, so what do you do in such a situation? So, so can be very useful in SOS kind of situations as well. So that's the end of uh, my fiduciary duties and would like to thank all of you for patiently hearing me out. Also, you know, this picture is one of my favorites uh, and I always like to end my presentations with, with this picture because it 
it displays so much hope and, and connectivity across generations, right? And uh, when, you, when you choose to drive your cars, uh, you know, to your favorite vacation spots and into the hinterland, uh, remember that uh, we are connecting almost 96 million customers in the rural India, which is, which is close to 40% of our base. So, so that's, that's our strength and that's our spirit and uh, endeavor. So look forward to, to interacting with you guys. Yeah. yeah. So what the law says is you can never share anybody's information or location or any sort of private data without their consent, right? So what we depend on our enterprise customers is to get us that consent. And how we help them is we build portals and we build systems which make that as easy as possible. So for example, the asset tracking solution, we have an online portal where you come and register a mobile number that you want to track. Right? It's a GSM-based location tracking. And an SMS goes to that number. Right? Unless and until that customer does not respond that, yes, I am willing to be tracked, you know, we will never, ever track that customer. So, so it's, a, it's a fulfillment model which has all the due regulations being taken care of. So we never share customer data without their consent. That's a given. It's illegal to do that, and we never do that. Yes, please. Hi, Srinivas. So we generally, if the tower is, I don't know, I mean, I'm not a very technical person, but when the, I assume that the tower is fully loaded with voice, the data doesn't go to the server. The data is, is that the statement is true or it is uh, reverse if I take a data? These are two questions. True. So I'll answer the first one first and then the second, right? So as far as, uh, you know, the confusion about, uh, you know, at how will I be charged? We have actually gone ahead and created a multitude of uh, special offerings for M2M SIPs, where you have a fixed rental, right, and then uh, that's all you pay, right, and then we don't come back and ask you how much data you used and this and that, and, you know, you have, so we, we suggest that you do a pilot and get a fair estimate of how much data you are projected to use, add some margin on top of that, and buy that pack. Once you buy that pack, you know, we don't ask questions how much speed you used and how many pings you did and so on and so forth. That said, we are also very sensitive about uh, signaling storms, right? So what many times non-standard devices, and that's a, that's a uh, I would say, a challenge in the M2M industry where a lot of devices are entering for which we don't even know if they follow the GSM standards, right? So if they tend to create 
signaling storms in our network where they don't send any data but they just keep pinging a server you know that's that can harm our network so so we do kind of block such sims right but apart from that uh, we understand for example energy metering for example vehicle tracking solutions will not be using the data the same way a normal smartphone will use right and have, hence we have created special categories for such kind of sims where you know it it delivers a cost effective and safe solution for m2m applications so 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 like, like as we speak we we kind of deliver those packages to millions of our customers so so yeah so that's that's the first answer uh the second answer is uh, towards the second question where you said voice always takes priority now this phenomena is different in different kinds of networks right in a 2g network what you're saying is true right that said uh, we are never in a situation where uh, you know the way we configure our networks that we cannot send any data right but then yes telecom networks are built to peak and sometimes with all your will you can't do that because of you know uh, ecosystem limitation somebody is not allowing you to put a site in a certain region because you know they are afraid of radiation right i don't want to go into the direction of you know saying whether that is right or wrong but then there are limitations at times where we are not able to add capacity even when we like to in those 2g situations yes voice takes priority but it is never a situation where there is no channel available for data Right. and typically when we talk about m2m kind of applications they don't consume so much data that they will not go through so so that's that's how it is but in 3g and 4g it's a common bearer there are no separate bearers for voice and data it's a common spectrum and a common bearer and hence it's it's a different uh, treatment when it comes to 3g and 4g yeah no is there all questions no So look forward to interact with you guys. Thanks a lot. Thanks for your patience and